Today I'm bringing you the best Dragon Link deck profile for the post-Phantom Nightmare competitive Yu-Gi-Oh format. What's Potion? You got Matt here and welcome back to another competitive Yu-Gi-Oh video. You guys already know me, but I love dragons. Dragon Link is one of my favorite decks of all time, and the fact that in this format here is really not going to be as good as it has been because we're in a very heavy fire format thanks to Prometheum Princess and Poplar and so on and so forth, but I do believe that dragons in general have a lot of hidden potential because their ability to play almost 20 spaces for a non-engine against a lot of these strategies while remaining relatively consistent as well. On top of that, they have an insanely powerful card against all these fire decks in Boral and the Dragon. There are so few outs to this card, but I'll get to that when we talk about the card in more detail. So if you're excited for this awesome Dragon Link deck profile, then make sure to smash the like button. If this video hits 250 likes, not only will I bring you a combo guide, but I'll also bring you some live duels using this specific deck against some of the best fire decks in the format today, including Snake Eye and Pure Fire King. Also, if you like competitive Yu-Gi-Oh in general, including deck profiles, combo guides, and meta discussions, you're gonna love this channel. So make sure to subscribe. We are on our road to 10,000 subscribers and we cannot get there without your help. But with that being said, here is the best Dragon Link deck profile for the post Phantom Nightmare competitive Yu-Gi-Oh format. Let's jump into it. All right, so welcome back into the deck profile portion of the video. We have here our Dragon Link deck that is not going to be one of the best decks of the format specifically because of how we're in a fire format right now there aren't too many lights or dark monsters going around right now outside of like Diabell star and a few hand traps so for that reason bistules just in general aren't going to be that strong and this deck does naturally play a bunch of bistules however what is very strong against all these fire decks is going to be Boral and Dragon. This card is really good because there are very few outs in that deck to a Boral and Dragon, especially once you have a couple of negations on the field as well. So I definitely want to take this card into consideration. That being said, we have a 48 card main deck and our 15 card extra and 15 card side deck. I am uh, proxying a card in the side deck. I just don't have it with me right now, but uh, I will give you an alternative for that if you don't have it either. That being said, let's jump into uh, starting off with our first three cards, our first engine, which is going to be the Bistral engine. We have three copies of Magma, of, uh, Magma, of Flubellion, excuse me, the one copy of Magnemut, the one Druid's Worm, and then two copies of Bistral Serenir, as well as two copies of Branded Regained. Now listen, I think this package is quite extensive. It's a, it's a lot of Bistrals right now. It, it looks like it at least. There's, in reality, what is that? Seven Bistral monsters, because we have the three Lubellion to search for are the Bistrals. This is the minimum that I would play, and the reason why is because Lubellion is such a good card for the strategy. Sure, it plays into Droll and Lockwood, but the entire deck does. You just have to make some concessions that time. That's just the weakness that the strategy has, and you have to be ready for it. Either way, Magnemut is, is amazing, again, getting you any dragon from graveyard or, or deck, excuse me. Druid's Worm gets you Ascend to the graveyard, which is great, and the reason why we're playing two Saranir is because Saranir helps you turn your engine online. I was actually debating playing three Saranir, but I felt like just it was too many Bistuals for the meta right now, so I want to cut it down and go to just four actual summonable Bistuals and keep my uh, my Lubellions at three copies. We also have, of course, our copies of Branded Regained. This card is so good in the strategy. You're not really recycling back your opponent's resources outside of like exactly SP Little Knight. They banished that card, which means that they can't get it back, which again is great. But the biggest advantage is going to be that it keeps recycling your resources, drawing you cards, getting your extra deck pieces back into the deck. It's a really solid card for that reason. This is our Bistral package. Moving on to our next package in the strategy, which is going to be our Rocket package made up of two copies of Rocket Tracer, the one copy of Rocket Recharger, the one Absa Router Dragon. Then we have three copies of Quick Launch. This is our rocket package in terms of monsters and, um, well, quick play spells, I should say. We have our Boot Sector launch later on when we talk about field spells in the deck. But this package is really concise, and I did not want to play this package. I really didn't because it plays into Droll and Lockbird. It's one of the other cards, one of the other strategies in the deck that does play into Droll. And that really hurts because if you get Drolled on the addition of something like the... Um, the boot sector launch, which is usually going to be your first thing to do, it makes it very hard to access this engine. But the reason I'm playing is because it is so good at making Boral and Dragon, it also turns on the negate. You can easily make Boral and Dragon without having access to the rocket package, but then you don't have a negate, and you want to have a negate, of course. So that's why we play these guys. Tracer lets you get your recharger out of the deck. Recharger gives you some protection and some follow-up. Absolute Dragon gets you Tracer. 
from the deck or any rocket really and then quick launch is your e lead not once per turn for rocket monsters as well honestly you open up with any of these cards you don't have to actually go through the line to send to use dragon ravine to send the copy of the apps router dragon because you can just send something else instead because you already have these guys in your hand that being said that's going to be our rocket package moving on to our next package which is going to be what i call our chaos package made up of three copies of star leech safert the one copy of Black Dragon Collapse Serpent and the one White Dragon Wyvern Buster with the one copy of Chaos Space and the one Chaos Dragon Levianir. Let me organize this a bit better, make it a bit cleaner for you guys. So this package here, I really like this package across the board. Uh, I am not playing the Black Dragon, uh, the Black Metal Dragon package. I don't think that package is is needed right now. It also loses even harder to draw and lock than a lot of other combos would which does hurt quite a bit uh, so I want to play this package as an option instead and I want to basically take that other package the five or so slots that you're going to be having with the black metal package and just use that for non-engine instead that being said safer is great as recovery because it has the graveyard effect to banish itself target a level eight dragon added to your hand if you can resolve chaos space then you're going to have a really good time against most of the decks in the format it's just that strong of a card getting the addition of your white dragon your black dragon your levianir or even your uh, bestial lubelion it makes life really really easy for you especially because you're also getting a draw as well as recycling your resources which is so good and then levianir is another really strong option as well has three great effects depending on if you're banishing lights darks or a mixture of both of them but basically if you're banishing only i believe it's light monsters then you can just special you can just do a monster reborn which is great uh if it's dark monsters you can just randomly shuffle a card back from your opponent's hand into the deck and if it's light and darks you can destroy two cards on the field without targeting which is really good to play around certain cards it does suck a bit because it does destroy which plays a little bit into the effects of the uh, snake eyes and fire king cards However, just target the cards that are most or are most problematic that you don't really care if they get their destruction effects, or you're just going for the rip effect of out of the hand. That's the main thing. If you're going for that effect, it's not going to matter. This is a great card going first for that reason. Makes your opponent start with one fewer card in the hand. And because the deck can play through so many hand traps outside of like exactly shifter and draw and lockbird, you can make them start usually with fewer cards than that because they're going to maybe ash something or they're going to go for nibiru at the wrong time or whatever the case might be either way that's going to be our chaos package moving on to the next package in our deck which is going to be our tuner package this this package here is not standard at all i just really like it because i love going into a synchro line with this specific strategy i think it's so strong and i, I want to have another option to send off of something like the dragon ravine in case i got drolled at some point in the combo or i didn't feel like my rocket line was going to go through so i'm adding in the one copy of ringo worm the dragon guarding the 100 apples two copies of assault synchron with the one copy of tuning and then the one copy of foolish burial this is my tuner package, for lack of a better word. We have the Ringo Worm, which essentially acts as two tuners in and of itself, because you can use this at first to be able to send it out a level eight tuner, for example, a level eight synchro rather, pretty easily, easily, or a level 10 synchro, and then you can bash it from your graveyard to be able to then summon out a token that can be used as a tuner. Just keep in mind that that token is a worm monster, it is not a dragon monster. Assault Synchron is great because it helps you get into your plays for your level 10 synchros pretty easily by having its effects. It's also really nice because if your if your copy of the Visual Dispatter is tributed, then you can just banish it, summon it back out, which is really nice as well. And then you can bring back the Assault Synchron with a copy of Visual Dispatter, and it kind of goes on a loop. You may be wondering why am I not playing three copies of Assault Synchron and only two? Well, the reason why is because even though the deck already plays into Droll and Lockbird, I felt like having the extra mill off the effect of tuning was really nice to help set up your graveyard. If you mill a light or a dark monster, that is really good because it helps turn on the Bistrals in your hand without having to use the effects or banish something that you may not want to banish in the first place. So for that reason, I am playing tuning. I do think it's a great option in this strategy. Uh, would I cut it to three copies of Synchron and zero copies of tuning? Maybe down the line I would, but for the time being, I'm pretty happy with the ratios. And the one copy of Foolish Burial, this is the 48th card in the deck. I was actually playing the third copy of Serenir over this copy of Foolish Burial, but the reason why I like it so much is because if I'm in a situation where I need to make sure I get access to my rocket engine, and the only way I can do that is by playing into Droll and Lockbird, which will eventually stop me from getting the rocket engine, this could be my first action of the game, using it, sending the apps router, get the tracer, and then I'm off to the races from there with the rocket engine itself. Or I can send something like the Assault Synchron if I'm planning to tribute my copy of Bistral Spatter, or if I want to send the copy of Ringo Worm, or whatever the case might be. I can use it for so many good things. It's just a free activation of a card. It's really, really solid. We then have our two field spells. We have our one copy of Boot Sector Launch and our one copy of Dragon Ravine. Boot Sector Launch is the field spell for the Rocket Archetype. So that's going to be our final package for engine cards in the strategy. Moving on to our non-engine 
this is a massive lineup. We have 15 hand traps and 18 non-engine cards in general. So starting off with the hand traps, we have three copies of Nibiru. We have three copies of Droll and Lockbird. We have three copies of Ash Blossom, three copies of Valor, three copies of Imperm, and then we have two copies of Triple Tactics Talent and the one copy of Call by the Grave. So this is our hand trap lineup. The three Nibiru I think is really good because there's so much summoning happening in this format right now. When you pair Nibiru with an additional card, it makes things really, really good, especially if you're playing up against some of the other decks in the format. If you're playing against Manadium, which is one of the other combo decks in the format right now, then you decide to go for Nibiru. They chain the effect of a Barone because they can make an early Barone. If you have access to Valor or Imperm, then you still blow up their board, which is really good. You just wait until the very end of their combo. That's obviously fantastic. Ash is great for decks like Branded and Labyrinth, of course. Droll and Lockwood is great against so many decks this format. Having access to Droll is really important. And against Fire decks, all these cards have utility. If you draw multiples of them, it makes your life a lot easier than it would have been without it. That being said, 15 hand traps, I think, in this deck here is plenty. We have 30 spaces for engine requirements and then 15 for hand traps and three for non-engine. Call by is call by, obviously, and talents is great because in this specific deck, it is really easy to, to interrupt, to try and interrupt rather, but you can still play through it. So having talents to draw two cards is really nice. More importantly than that, most of the time, you're going to want to look at your opponent's hand, take a look and get rid of one card because at that point in time, you have the possibility of ripping a card out with Levianir as well. They've already hand trapped you and at that point, they're down three cards. Cards, meaning they have three cards to play through usually three to four pieces of interruption which is obviously not going to happen very consistently but that being said that's going to be our main deck i, I haven't really ever played a deck that has this much space for an engine right now obviously you can add more cards in the deck for engine to make it more consistent but i'm really happy with the list right now and the way it's been performing for me especially against fire decks even with the higher count for bistral monsters but that being said let's move on to our extra deck starting off with the one copy of boral and dragon usually i want to start talking about the link fives and the higher link monsters at the end but this card is so so good it is like the reason why this deck is really playable right now so i do want to take a second and talk about it because basically it's a card that can be destroyed by battle or card effects huge right there so what effects are you going to be using with a snake eyes or fire king player well you can use sp well it also can't be targeted by monster effects and that's huge on top of that i can attack all monsters your opponent controls once each and you can basically have it has like a monster negate effect on it it's a monster negate that can't be responded to which is great but you do have to, have to play a rocket and have a rocket in your graveyard to be able to activate that effect, which is really important. So that being said, it's a fantastic card. It's very easy to make in this deck as well. And because you play Branded Regained, if this card does get outed, you can always banish it with something uh, like a Bistral and shuffle it back into the deck. Or you can just summon it back out with a Bistral Dispatter anyways, which is crazy to think of. So Borland Dragon, fantastic card. The only real consistent out the deck the Snake Eye Fire Kings deck have for this card is going to be exactly Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. That is it. So just keep that in mind. Moving on is going to be our link three of choice being the triple burst dragon. This is a key card to make the Boral End Dragon. You just want to have a dragon monster that can be pointing downwards exactly. So you want to have this card here. We're also playing the one copy of Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy. Great card in this format. Brings back Diabell Star, for example. Brings back a lot of extra bodies to make other cards. And that's really important here. We're also playing the one copy of ip with the one sp great cards in this format obviously uh giving us extra interruption a lot of the time you'll end on a board with boral load with ip with a level 10 synchro of choice or on a board of spheres with ip and a level 10 synchro of choice possibly even branded regained and another uh, level eight maybe but it depends on the hand and we also are playing the one copy of romulus this card here is your way to search for the dragon ravine great card here also has a second effect doesn't come up too option often in this specific variant of the deck but it's still solid nonetheless i am playing two copies of Hieratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres. I love this card. I think it's so good. Is it the best right now? No, but it's a card that is really good to help recycle resources. It gets you cards out of your own deck or hand, which is really nice to summon out onto the field. And because it's a non-target return to the hand, it makes life really easy for you because you're able to get rid of a lot of problematic threats that can't be destroyed or targeted. So I want to have this card in two copies. I'm also, of course, playing the one copy of Striker Dragon and the one copy of Guard Dragon Pisty. This is going to be our Link lineup. It is 10 Link monsters. That being said, we move on now to our Synchro monsters in the strategy. I am playing, because we're playing the level 2 tuner package, the Ringo Worms and the Assault Synchrons, I am playing the one Excel Synchro Starters Dragon. You do not have to play this if you're not playing that package. I really like that package, so I'm going to be playing it. But again, I know it's not probably the most common thing to be played. That being said, we are also playing our level 
eight of choice that we try to end on being the one copy of Borlode Savage Dragon, a great card for Omni Negation. You can easily get three negates on this. Maybe most of the time you'll get two negates on it, but still really solid option nonetheless. For my level 10s, I am playing the one copy of Bistral Dispatter, an amazing card in this format, being able to revive back my lights and dark monsters which is great. I uh, feel to get extra interruptions, obviously fantastic. Getting negation or destruction is also really good too. We're playing the one copy of Barone, a great option, but also really good because of the tag out effect. If you use Barone, for example, to negate something during your turn, tag it out right away into something like a copy of Saferd on your opponent's turn or a copy of, sorry, Saferd on your turn rather, or a copy of, let's say, Magnumut on your opponent's turn to get a search for follow-up and so on and so forth, a really solid option. And the final level 10 synchro is going to be the one copy of Chaos Angel, uh, a great card, obviously, you have to play in this type of deck here it is so so strong because there are some hands that you don't have access to a tuner you have a level four and a level six you have a bestial and a safer for example or a bestial and a wyver booster then you're getting into chaos angel is really nice because it is very hard to out for a lot of different decks so that being said that is going to be our 15 card extra deck and moving on to our side deck where we have a few additional hand traps starting off with the three copies of Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. I really wish I could find my third secret rare, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, this card is really good against a lot of other decks in the format right now, not just fire decks. But if I'm, in a, if I'm in a situation where I feel like I need to have another hand trap and I don't like either Nibiru or Droll and Lockbird or Valor or whatever the case might be, there's a lot of decks in the format that are pretty weak to a lot of hand traps and others that just do not care about them at all. So having Bell as an option for those is great. Also, another option is going to be the three Cosmic Cyclone, another great card, not only against fire decks, but also against decks like Labyrinth. For example, against Labyrinth, I'm not playing Droll and Lockbird. I'm not playing Nibiru. Those cards are not good enough against those decks. So Cyclone and Ghost Bell are going to be coming in over those six cards. And I feel like it's a great inclusion. I'm also playing three copies of Triple Tactics Thrust with a few different targets. Now, one of the targets, it should be Soul Release. I can't find it. So for that reason, I am playing an alternative, but Instead of the Lightning Storm, I would play Soul Release. If I had it, again, that would be Soul Release, so I'll put a little image over it or something so you guys know. That being said, I'm also playing the one copy of Harpy's Feather Duster, the one copy of Evenly Matched, as our Thrust targets. Thrust is not a card that I'm siding in going first. I can, but it doesn't make too much sense because my only real targets are going to be like Evenly Matched or Triple Tactics Talents or Chaos Space or I guess Foolish Burial. But honestly, most of the time my opponent's not going to have a monster. So the best case scenario for Thrust is going to be to set a copy of Imperm which is that really the best thing that I can do? Probably not. Moving on though, we have two copies of Anti-Spell Fragrance to round out our 14 cards in our side deck. Our final card, you guys know where I'm going with this, is going to be the one copy of Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. You know why this is here. This is here for game three. And that is going to be our 15 card extra deck, or side deck, I should say. Uh, Anti-Spell, I should explain quickly. This card is great. We do have a lot of spell cards in the deck, including the quick launches, the talents. We have the copies of the random regain, the field spells, of course. It doesn't hurt us that much because usually we're going through our full combo and then setting anti-spell fragrance. Pretty much the entire rest of the duel after that, we're just using monster effects. The setup requires spells and traps, or spells rather, but the actual finished combo does not. But anyways, that's going to be our extra deck, our side deck, I should say. I think I made that mistake twice now. So with that being said, if you enjoyed the video or if you learned something new and you want to see more content from me, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. We recently hit our goal of 7,500 subscribers and we couldn't have gone there without your help. But now we have a brand new goal and that's to hit 10,000 subscribers. And I also want to thank you for one other thing. We ended up hitting 1 million views on the channel, which is mind boggling. So thank you guys so much for just enjoying the content and watching. It really does mean the world to me. And of course, uh, if you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like on the video as well. If this video hits 250 likes, then I will bring you some live duels using this Dragon Link deck against some of the best decks of the format, including obviously Fire King and Snake Guy. And of course, comment your thoughts on the deck down below. What changes would you make? What do you think about? Are you planning to play Dragons this format? I would love to hear from you. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next time.